Ladies and gentlemen, what is good, y'all? It's the Chillmeister Chris Gary for a very special, and I do mean in this case, very special edition of Focus Fights Audio. And I just want to basically say this right now. She is beauty and grace, but she will punch you in the face. And with about three weeks to go... <laughs> And she's laughing at my joke right now because it's kind of corny. But in about three weeks before her combat sports curtain call, I mean, it is three weeks before her combat sports curtain call, I have the honor and privilege to talk to this former three-time amateur wrestling world champ, 13-fight MMA veteran, and member of the legendary Yamamoto family. Ladies and gentlemen from Tamuni in Guam by way of Toronto, Ontario, Canada and Yokohama, Kanagawa, Japan, she is the fighting Queen Bee, Ms. Miyu Yamamoto. Ms. Yamamoto, first of all, how, how are you doing and how's the training going for your final fight? Hi, I'm, I'm good and uh, my training is going very well. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. How are you? I'm doing all right, Miss Yamamoto. It's like I said before we even started recording. It's an honor and a privilege to talk to somebody as legendary as yourself, especially considering that for a lot of people, and they may not know this, but for a lot of people, at least on my side of the combat sports world, their first recollection of you was in that big egg wrestling universe event that happened almost 30 years ago i think last month at the tokyo dome and you shared the stage with i think animal hamaguchi's daughter against a couple of french amateur wrestlers oh. yes 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 i mean but oh, also, okay okay yes, yes, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. but also you happened to share the stage with Basically, pro wrestling royalty like Aja Kong, Minami Toyota, Medusa <laughs> Masili, uh -huh. you know, names like uh -huh. that. I mean, I just gotta ask have you ever watched that particular event either in full or in part because it's a 10 hour show, but mostly to just look back at your match? Um, that show was, yes, very special. Uh, I was just waiting in the back room and then to walk in, wrestle, walk out, I went home. <laughs> so I didn't get the, I didn't get to see any of the matches. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so basically when that show happened, I think it was November 23rd, 1994, you just had your match. You know, you just had your match, enjoyed the camaraderie of being around 60,000 people, and just left? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I Yeah, I don't know why, but um, <laughs> I just remember, whoa, that's huge, you know, the venue was huge, because we always wrestle, compete, compete in the, you know, some like a gymnasium, and then not a, like a Tokyo Dome, so that was like a... I was like, holy! <laughs> exactly. And then, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wrestle, and I'm gonna get the head out. <laughs> but it was a very honor and a very um, amazing experience that I had. Understood, understood. Especially because, you know, in a way, it's like what I mean. Basically, it's like what Joe. It's like. What Joe Hiramoto said at the recent Rise in Press conference, it's not every day you get to make your debut in front of a whole ton of people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And yeah. you know what, that kind of reminds me of, you know, what you're basically doing now compared to the fact that, you know, back in 1994, not a lot of people knew you, not a lot of people knew about you know, your family outside of your dad being an Olympian in 1972. But mm -hmm. if you think about what was going on in the combat sports world for women back then, compared to what's going on now with everybody basically getting deals out the end, some of them having to open up sites and some what? I mean, I'm not going to get off into the nitty gritty, but 
compare from then to now in the world of combat sports, do you think that women are probably getting more of an equal playing field as far as putting themselves over compared to back yes, in the it's, it's getting yes, as I'm compared to back then, it's getting bigger and bigger and then um I think we get more respect than before. For sure, because you know, the, look at the the boxing, the boxing too. You know, women's fights. Um, some women fights are the main event. That's mm-hmm. amazing. You know, I'm so like I'm so um, happy and then grateful to watch that. And even MMA too. You know, we um, we can be the main fight in a main event as how crazy and great is that <laughs> yeah i mean it's so i mean go ahead but yeah so it's like a very um it's showing that we improve in uh, yeah <laughs> understood me you i mean it's basically showing that and especially you would know about this too. It would basically show that women are getting shown with respect. I mean, it's basically taking a while for it to get to the point where women are getting paid equally and with respect, but the respect is going a long way towards being recognized. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes, it goes a long way, but... Well, we did it. I mean, we're doing it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, on your end, what has it been like being a pioneer of amateur wrestling, not just in Japan, but you had to go into Canada in order to try and get recognized as well? But, mm-hmm. you know, how have you said, you know, how would you feel basically saying that you're a pioneer? of amateur wrestling you're trying to help out the sport grow in many different mm-hmm. aspects what am i trying to say oh my god i'm just sorry i'm so embarrassed what <laughs> i know you keep like brushing your head and then like you know <laughs> I mean, it's, tra- it's well, hard to try and get these questions out. I just, <laughs> I just feel lost. But basically what I was trying to ask is what has it yeah. been like being a pioneer of women's mm-hmm. wrestling? Because you obviously are a three-time amateur wrestling world champion. And you've done a lot mm-hmm. not just in Japan but in Canada as well to make mm-hmm. amateur wrestling grow. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm very honored, and then um, it's just you know I started very earlier state than right now, so that's like a I guess like automatically became a pioneer because you know we didn't have so much uh, women's wrestler, so it just happened. So I when I was a wrestler, always you know as com- competition is you know win or lose. Not trying to be like, um, like a pioneer, or not try to be like, oh, super sir. You know, it's it's nice to be a super sir. <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, everyone mm-hmm. wants to be, but we didn't compete for that. I mean, like, uh, at, at least me, you know, I just wanted to be, you know, win or become a world champ. And then that those things like a pioneer or you know being a public figure, it come came like after. So it's kind of like a naturally like automatically because I started very like early, <laughs> so like a long time ago. But it's a MMA. It's a different. You know, um, we have to put on the good show for the fans. You know, like I call it show because. You know, like, a, no one wants to see, like, a boring fight. <laughs> so I have to be professional to be um, put on a good show for the fans. Mm. So that's a big difference. Yeah. Indeed. I'm not answering your... I'm sorry, I'm not answering your question, I think. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You pretty much answered it well for me to understand. 
which now okay. leads me to your mixed martial arts career. You are now 13 okay. fights into a fight career that has lasted seven years, but not to okay. mention your husband, Kyle Aguiwan, also fights. Your son, Arsen Batman Yamamoto, fights. And okay. need I mention all of that pales in comparison to your brother, Hugh Darvish, who has pitched a lot in Major League Baseball over the last decade. I mean, I've seen him play. The dude is pretty intense. But compared to your fights, how has the adrenaline been for you, you know, watching your son fight or watching your husband fight or watching you Darvish pitch compared to when you fight? True, it's... I... I, it's like, I don't, I don't say hate, but I don't like to watch the fight. And even you, so, okay, so you, um, your job is because of my brother. He came to Japan for pitching, you know, WBC. Mm -hmm. It was like, re I get really, um, uh, how to say, I get really uh, scared, you know, like, not not scared, like, it's so, like, so intense, you know, like, so I don't like to watch and, you know, like, a fight or play any of my family member. It's not comfortable at all. i rather, yeah, it's just, my fight is easier, you know, I can control, like, myself, and you know, I can control my feeling and emotion and uh, so much easier. You know, it's only me. <laughs> so, let's yeah. just say they probably get more nervous seeing you fight than you watching a fight or a ball game. Yeah, nervous. Nervous. Intense. Nervous. Intense. Nervous. Yes. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. Understood. Wakarimas. Now, when it comes down I... to the fact that, you know, you're going to be retiring after this particular fight... I mean, it's mm -hmm. worth asking, what are you going to miss about, you know, the pomp and pageantry about the fight world? Because you probably have explained on numerous occasions that all 13 of these fights that you've been in with Ryzen, it almost feels like a mini concert or a mini performance wrapped up into a fight show. Am I wrong or am I right? <laughs> yeah right um it's every i'm gonna miss everything actually for sure every every moment even you know even i lost a fight i'm gonna miss that you know because you know after you retire you can get that you know <laughs> lose when you know that feeling mm -hmm. and the preparation like the training practice you know hang out with the like teammate after training you know let's i'm gonna miss all of it every single moment i see <laughs> i see and mm -hmm. i mean i basically hate to drag your record into this but you are six and mm -hmm. seven overall all six of your wins have come by decision and as, uh -huh. as the losses go, six of your seven losses have come by finish. Uh -huh. Do you ever feel like when it came down to the wins that you, you know, could have utilized the superior rule set at least a little bit more in your fights? <laughs> ah, I know it's just what it is. It does happen. That's like a result. And, but... Like I say, I say this everywhere, but you know my record is not great. <laughs> you know, I I lost a lot, but I still get the fight, and I still, you know, my fans are always supporting me, and it's I'm very lucky. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. if, if some, you know, some people lost that and then you get kicked out or, you know, no one care. <laughs> but, you know, my fans are always supporting me, like always believe in me. And, then, you know, it's amazing, you know, but mm -hmm. that's, that's like a priceless. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Or in a way, mm -hmm. I mean, you could be like Felony Charles Bennett 
and have your one win in the last eight years be a flying knee KO. And no <laughs> how, yeah, and no matter how many losses you have, people will still have love for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my last fight, I want to... I want that. I want it to be memorable, you know. <laughs> mm. So I know, of course, I'm going to win. I'm going. Yeah, that's what I'm trying for. But also, I'm gonna put on an amazing and great show, in the rising. Mm-hmm. I promise. Understood. And I mean, come to think of it, your last fight was all the way back in July of 2022. Considering the fact that you're mm-hmm. going to be coming into this fight off an 18-month layoff versus Seika mm-hmm. Zawa in a non-title contest, do you feel like, you know, because it's your last fight, it's too late to shake off the brain rust? Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, like a long break. Like, I wasn't taking a long, long break, you know. I've been like a training every day. Um, well, I had like surgery and a recovering time, but uh, still, you know, I train every day, mm-hmm. just like a, I had a fight, just like I had a fight. So I don't feel like I had like a long um, break from the fight. Yeah. Always the steady, ready. Yeah, I mean, there's a phrase <laughs> here in the States that's basically said, like, we stay ready so we don't have to get ready. <laughs> yeah, that's a wrestler, you know, wrestling, wrestler, training, like, every day, you know, like, the whole three year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> and now, one more question I basically want to ask before we go and clock off this interview but it's been five okay. years since your brother, Noifumi Kid Yamamoto, has passed away. As mm-hmm. newer MMA fans start to get more inclined into other forms of combat sports, how do you think mm-hmm. newer fans should remember Noifumi, be it through his fights, his charisma, or his personality? Oh. <laughs> I no, mean, if it's a loaded it's question, <laughs> if it's a loaded question, I'm sorry. You know, take your time. Oh, no, no, no. Um, I think people like, you know, his style, of course he has a style, like a fight style, you know, always against the bigger um, op- opponent, you know, than him. He's like, he's like a small guy. He's, I mean, like, uh, he's a lighter. We, um didn't have his division, so that's why he had to fight bigger op- opponents every day. I mean, like every fight. So I uh, that that's like your, that's crazy, you know. Like I I have a my weight class, you know. Always we have to make a weight in the fight. That's like a like a must, you know. You have to make weight again. But he's like, you know. How many kilo? I don't know how many pounds. Like it was way bigger than him, but he's still, you know. Okay, I'll take a fight. Okay, I'll do it. You know, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I want, I want people to know that he is like a very, I don't know, brave. I don't know. He wouldn't say like that. Maybe he, he wouldn't like that <laughs> if I say, "Oh, you're such a brave." It's like a what? No, that's what I want, you know, let me just do it, and I'm, it's not a brave, because that's what I choose, you know, so he's like a very supernatural guy, you know, like, always like a free, like, you know, like the freedom, and you know, he do whatever he wants, like, I, I don't know, <laughs> well, he's like, um, I don't know, because <laughs> he's my brother, and I want to, but he's like a, he's a superstar, like an idol to me, too. I'm the, I mean, he's like a big fan, too, you know. <laughs> I mean, come to think of it, uh, all I can say, and I can't really say much because I came into the sport as a fan kind of late, so I missed most of Kid Yamamoto's heyday live. But as long as newer fans treat Kid Yamamoto's legacy with respect and with honor instead of just throwing it by the wayside, 
You know, mm-hmm. th- that way Noifumi's legacy will be remembered. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, thank you. <laughs> you will. Thank you so much. I I appreciate that. That uh, that it means a lot. You won't miss Yamamoto. And one more thing I would like to ask, and it sucks that I couldn't ask about your plans for the future after this fight against Seike Izawa, but when it comes down to this particular fight, I mean, is there any message that you would like to say to your fans who are going to be watching this around the world and hoping that you succeed? Um... I'm very honored and very lucky that I, I'm going to have undefeated champion for my last fight. So that means I'm going to be the first one to beat her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, you can say, hey, I'm not coming out with the title, but I am coming out with your undefeated record. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't really need a title because I'm going to retire. But, so, yeah. That's what I want to. <laughs> understood, me, you understood. Yeah. And with that, before I sign off, is there any way your fans can contact you just to get in touch with you, send you a message of encouragement, and all that stuff? Um. Oh, that's that's great. Um, find me in an Instagram and then send me a message. I'll be very, very happy, and then it's gonna support me, help me to get this victory win. <laughs> it's like my team, you know, the like team me. <laughs> I see. But other than that, me, you, it's been fun. I mean, damn, it just felt so good to talk to you. <laughs> but I hope that you... Thank you. I mean, you're welcome. But I hope that your career... I mean, I hope that your legacy in the sport will never be forgotten whether you win or lose this last fight. Because you basically provided a lot of memories in combat sports over the last 31 years. And I hope that you hypothetically get your flowers before it's all said and done. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) It means a lot. (laughs) No problem, you. (laughs) One interview down, two to go. Check our links in the description for where you can find out more about us. And don't forget, Rising 45 will air live and exclusive on Trello TV and Pay Per View December 31st, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific.